Hello and welcome to a little editing video in which I want to show you some of the new generative AI tools that have been added to Photoshop and how you can use them to do some cleanup tasks. So I'm not a big fan of generative AI when it comes to what it's used to most of the time, which is fooling the viewers. So creating images completely from AI and in my opinion, there's not much creativity in it because to be honest, even if you write a book as a prompt, the output of the generative AI still involves a lot of chance and the deliberation that usually goes into photography for me is completely taken away when you let the AI take over. That being said, you don't have to let the AI take over. You can also use it very deliberately, which is what I want to show you in this video. For example, when this new remove tool was introduced, it was already a bit of a game changer because it made it much easier to remove smaller distractions from an image. Distractions which don't really add to the essence of a scene. Now for bigger distractions, I usually had to go in and do a lot of manual cloning and sometimes this was really hard. Now you could say just leave it in. You should not alter this scene but let's to be honest here just look at those trash bags so i had scouted this scene the day before there were many people but none of the trash now i came back in the morning well in the morning there are the trash bags now i could start retouching it manually but this is very difficult because of the lighting and also we have the perspective so you have to take this into account when you do the cloning it can take a lot of time well this is something where generative ai can help and the new function that photoshop has added is you have now access to google's nano banana pro and also to flux which are very powerful models and i want to show you how you can use them to do some cleanup work what they are good at and what they aren't good at but those are not included in your creative cloud subscriptions so you have a few credits i think like 25 and for the older ones like 100 credits but one call to one of those external apis costs you 10 credits so you quickly use them up if you want to do a cleanup of an image like this so what i did i got a subscription to make this video and i will cancel it immediately afterwards because 2000 credits i don't need it for some cleanup work it's more like i need 100 now and that's it as usual adobe makes a ridiculous subscription out of it which for normal photographers is much too expensive. What I would have loved for them to do is allow you to just buy some credits. For example, buy 100 credits for a dollar, buy 500 for five dollars, so on. Use them as long as you want and be done with it. No, they had to make it a subscription. And as I said after this video, I just cancel it. But as long as I have this subscription, I can also show you what it can do and what it can't do. So for example, look at this area. So this is what I started with. We have this trash bag here and we are cloning it manually is very difficult also we have a cat sitting here which is a little blurred out because it moved during my exposure now first i made a selection and that's very important you can't just prompt the ai and give it the whole image as input that's too big most of them are only capable of producing a limited amount of pixels especially google nano banana pro so you make a selection and the important thing in the selection you should include enough of the surrounding area so still give it context for example i went with this here so i also gave it some of the couple areas below and also included the cat here and then i went here to edit generate a fill and describe what i wanted and to be honest I played around with it, longer prompts, shorter prompts. In the end, the best prompt was just remove the trash bags from the street. And then here, that's the important thing. I selected the Gemini 3 with Nano Banana Pro. And now let's just have a look, not waste any more credits because I already did this, what Google produced. Now at first, in terms of detail and what it did, it's quite astonishing how good this looks, but also it's it's unusable in this state because we have a color shift here and also it changed the aspect ratio. So for some reason, it just shrank the image. And the reason it does this, my suspicion is that Google Nano Banana Pro works with a certain internal aspect ratio or pixel ratio. So what it will do, it will internally resize it, then work on this resized image. Problem is it won't return it back. So the first thing you have to do is just control T and stretch it back. The good thing is you can usually get it to match the original very well. Just need to do a few iterations, for example, up here also to just move it so it matches up and then down here. And then we have solved the first problem. Now, the second problem is the color shift. And I haven't figured out yet why it does it. So we have certainly some of this red colors here in the image. And what we can do 
we put a use saturation on top and holding down alt we can snap it to this google layer now we select the red here because those are the red colors that are disturbing and if we just remove the opacity and also shift it a little more into the yellow direction maybe make it a little darker we suddenly already have a much better match in terms of color that's the first step also let's put a curves layer on top here and make it darker because it also got brighter and less contrasty so just make it darker and once you darken it you will also want to go back to the hue saturation and adjust this a bit more so take out even more of the red make it a little darker even more you can also look at some of the other colors maybe take out a bit of the blue and certainly take out magenta and now this already looks pretty good but up here you now see the curves made it too dark so you also want to do using a black brush some masking and try to get as close to a smooth transition here and now this already looks very good but it doesn't have to be perfect now what we will do we just select all those three here and then we press ctrl g to make it a group and now we put a black mask on it holding down alt and clicking on the mask icon and now what we can do we just go in with a 100 percent white brush also a soft brush and then we just paint in the areas which we actually wanted to remove so also here the cat and the trash bags clean this up and now this looks pretty good you also notice here the tail is missing so this would be an additional prompt let's have a look what i did in the end i added in the tail and then also i did some manual cloning on top of it because this looked a bit out of place here and now i arrived at a very good final result so see the before and after so you see nano banana alone doesn't do a perfect job yet but with some um, retouching on top of it you can create a near perfect result also let's have a look what flux did with the same prompt so with flux you can give it much more context it can work with higher resolution images and also produce higher resolution results but if you confine your actual selections to smaller pieces you don't need it the good thing with flux it doesn't change the aspect ratio so it really just removes it the problem is it also is not really perfect so let's have a look here this is what google did so a lot more detail here and with flux it looks very smooth here and also down here they didn't do a very good job and i tried a few times it always looks a little different typical thing when using generative ai same goes for nano banana but nano banana is more consistent and also more detailed and we're looking here at a hundred percent view so the detail it produced in this area matches the detail we have here in the surrounding areas which makes it a very natural result so this is typically one of the giveaways if the amount of detail and the sharpness changes you usually see that something was done to the image also color contrast stuff like that but this is something we could fix afterward so yeah i think this is a rescue job which i'd say is something where generative ai can help a lot because you don't waste so much time trying to do it per hand but you also saw that generative ai alone is not sufficient so it always takes your skill as a photo editor to make it look convincing and just see this generative AI as another tool in your toolbox. As with all those tools, don't overuse it. Try to use it to solve problems where it's appropriate and also sometimes combine the different AIs. So for example, sometimes also helps to see what Firefly does, what Flux does, and maybe combine all the three using masks to get the best result and then add some manual cloning on top of it. So this is usually what yields the best results for me. That being said, hope you liked this video. I now have to cancel my subscription again and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.